It's the beginning of the week, which means everybody's getting their mock drafts out. Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm Maki, giving you my views, thoughts, and opinions. By the way, what's crackalacking? It's your boy, Broshmo. Just in case you did not know so, go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up. Enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful football discourse. You can check out my power rankings and predictions going into week uh, six of the NFL that came out earlier today. And yesterday, you could check out my scouting report for... Uh, college football and all the uh 2023 eligible prospects we're gonna switch it over here as this was compiled by the entire scouting team from the draft network check out the draft network they do very good work so we're gonna go ahead and look at that today also special thanks to underdog fantasy for sponsoring this video if you like uh doing like weekly weekly uh fantasy football or prop bets now they got college pickums check out underdog fantasy use promo code broschmo when you sign up also bet responsibly let's go ahead and get into this sucker as uh, let's see first what the order is order is determined will buy okay they got it right here because i know a lot of y'all always hate the order but the order for this mock draft is determined by the odds to win the Super Bowl as of Sunday morning. So it's not taking into account the results from Sunday nor Monday. So, uh, yeah, if you got a problem with uh, the draft order, take it up with uh, Vegas. Anywho, they got the Houston Texans picking at one going Bryce Young. I think now there's a lot more hesitancy to Bryce Young going first with just Stroud looking so good you know and they were already kind of on par in terms of what they can do as prospects but man yeah I mean your teams are gonna love the size of Stroud opposed to a guy like Bryce Young but I love Bryce Young I still think he's the best thrower of the football in college football this guy tacks the middle feel like no one's business that's rare to find in an NFL prospect but if you're the Texans picking first yeah you're gonna end up going quarterback regardless Seattle Seahawks are number two here. Go CJ Stroud. And I'm just going to say, yo, I don't know, man. They, they still might be picking top 10, but I don't, Geno Smith hasn't playing it, uh, that offense on a different level, man. I'm not going to lie. Some of me once like contemplates like bringing Geno back for another go of things, you know, but we still got a whole lot of season left. If you're picking second overall and you're the Seahawks, it'd be wise to go quarterback. We'll see where they end up falling in the draft or weeks time. So we'll find that out again. A lot of football to be made, uh, to be made, to be had. So yeah, uh, again, Seahawks pick it first. You're going Stroud. I think Bryce Young and Stroud are kind of the unanimous, like top two picks. Uh, Cause I mean, these top two teams are typically needing quarterbacks. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll see it at the end of the year. It's a, a lot of it's looking like it's gonna probably gonna be the Panthers. I can't imagine now that they fired Matt Rule, how that'll uh, go down. How they won't be like picking top one, top two. So we'll see. Texans are still, um, they're a competitive team, but still not a great team. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. The Chicago Bears are next, and they're going Jalen Duncan. The Draft Network notably really loves Duncan. Duncan didn't have such a great out in this past weekend. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Was it, was it... Who did they face? Was it Purdue? I think it was Purdue. Maryland. Oh, I should have put schedule. Instead, it's giving me stuff about the state of Maryland. Uh, but I guess I could talk about Jalen Duncan a little bit. I like he's a, he's a good mover. Uh, he's got good length. I don't know. I feel like yeah, they did face Purdue. Uh, I feel like you know Paris Johnson or Peter Skaronsky, Broderick Jones are the kind of the guys right now. Olu uh, Fachanu. He's got a big matchup this week against Michigan. But uh, like Duncan didn't do great. I think he allowed like. I want to say like four pressures, but I mean, they were throwing the ball a ton in that game. Like it wasn't a terrible out. Don't get me wrong. It was just like, it was okay. It was all right. So him going this high, like again, oh man, a lot can change, but uh, they, they are one of the, one of the, there are one of, if not like 
they're like the only one I really hear about talking about Jalen Duncan as like a top 10 pick. The Washington Panthers are next on the clock going here. Let me scoot this. Here we go. Going Will Anderson. Um, okay. This is interesting. I get it. I mean, you got Jalen Carter here, and that might make more sense if they don't decide to move forward with Payne on the interior. Uh, th honestly, this is probably a prime trade down spot if you are the Washington Commanders. I get Will Anderson's great prospect. You could really throw Jalen Carter up there with him. Like him, uh, him and Jalen Carter are widely regarded as the top, um, top two non-quarterback prospects. That's that's what uh, what I was trying to say. But uh, this is just a weird one. Um, I get it. You're in this position, but man, you gotta think you go Jalen Carter, right? Uh, Carolina Panthers go Will Levis. Will Levis did have the walking boot this week. If you're Carolina, you gotta be looking for a quarterback. Uh, hopefully you're lucky enough to go for one of the top two there. I think currently, based on today's stand-ins, they are projected the first pick by Tankathon. So, uh, good for the Panthers, man. You're going to get a new coaching staff and likely a new quarterback. I think even regardless, if you're not picking one or two, you're going to be getting a new quarterback. Will Levis, uh, I've mentioned my uh, hesitancy with Levis in the past, walking boot, unable to play against South Carolina. It'd be great, like fair play. Like we saw how busted that uh, Kentucky team looked without their uh, head signal caller. So yeah, Atlanta Falcons are going Jalen Akata out of Georgia. Jalen Carter is a monster. Throwing him next to Grady Jarrett. Oh, scary. Just improving the pass rush just makes a ton of sense if you're the Falcons. You can't get your hands on one of those top two quarterbacks. I'd say I'd just stay away. Don't know what they got in Desmond Ritter. Don't know if we'll find that out this season. But it, it feels a bit better uh, knowing that you're out of contention for the uh, one of the top two quarterbacks. New York Jets go Peter Skaronsky. We do know that they need uh, some offensive line help. Matter of fact, did... Uh, Elijah Vera Tucker play tackle once again this week against the Dolphins. I can't remember off the top of my head. Here, so let me pull it up. Let's see. Blocking. Elijah Vera Tucker. Because honestly, he's not done. A okay, he played right tackle this week. Uh, for for the Jets. So, yeah, actually played pretty darn well, too. So, you might not necessarily... Uh, I mean, regardless, you're looking offensive line. Peter Scronzi gives you the flexibility there. A guy that was recruited as a, as a center uh, has probably guard size in terms of his length and athleticism, but is playing lights out as a tackle in college football. Uh, who did, Was it Dwayne Brown that ended up playing this past week? Yeah, he made his return this past week. Good. He was pretty solid in pass protection. Not bad. I like that. So I like the Peter Scaronzi pick. Obviously, you got a Band-Aid there uh, in terms of Dwayne Brown. Or, yeah, Dwayne Brown. So you're going to eventually need to find that other tackle. Uh, I mean, shoot, dude. Because, I mean... This is the thing, man. Like Mikai Becton, do you, do you just give up on him now? I I mean, not necessarily. But then again, just bringing in talent doesn't mean you give up on a prospect, especially if the, uh, with a guy that has versatility to play inside. I say versatility that's more so projected inside in the NFL. Pittsburgh, they go Keely Ringo. Yeah, get that secondary some help. Buffalo, they've been annihilating guys. But uh, yeah, I mean, Steelers second, like their corner position, they, they just need more talent. It's a very, uh, you would, I would say, a volatile position. So just acquire more talent there. Ringo is my top guy. Holy crap, this is interesting. Detroit Lions go quarterback Cameron Ward out of Washington State. And it literally starts with, let's get spicy with this mock draft. 
because listen uh i know there was a lot of golf truthers out there you're not hearing them much after this weekend like he's not your guy going forward you cut him at the end of this year and you get back 21 million you save your you, you just save yourself 21 million um that he would be due if he played in 2023 uh and for all intents and purposes, like if you put in, in a rookie quarterback, you could at least for the most part expect to get similar production as to what Goff is doing for this squad for the most part, I would say, because uh, a lot of his stuff has been uh, after the catch. I mean, you got you got you got studs there in Amon Ross St. Brown, Jameson Williams. Uh, you got a very good offensive line. Why not go out and get your quarterback if you want? Uh, and we'll get to the, the actual pick of the quarterback. A lot of people will be like, oh, no, man, their defense is in shambles. You cut Goff. Use that money to bring in some defense. Like, it's as simple as that. Like, your defense lacks talent. It, it, that ain't going to change if you with this pick. It's not. Rookies don't do that for teams typically. Unless you're like Micah Parsons. They just don't. Do I have to remind you? Jeffrey Okuda? Yeah, now he's playing good football, but like the first two years, he did nothing for the squad. Now, Cameron Ward, I don't expect him to come out. He, the, as I think it's put here, I thought I saw it, that he's still, a, if not, okay, he's incredible, if not a bit raw. And he, very much so. That's very true. Like, he's a guy I think that's going to probably, like, he is literally, he jumped from, what was it, FCS football, now to playing Power 5 football. So, yeah, this guy's gonna need he's gonna need some developing. So like I expect War fully to come back and return. Uh don't know why not many people are talking about DJ Uyungalalele. Alright, we got the New England Patriots going Jackson Smith and a Jigba. That's actually a very popular pick for the Patriots right now. Uh first wide receiver off the board, by the way. Um but you get a guy that will just eat in the slot he can um create after the catch getting that type of guy for mac jones who currently doesn't have that on their like at the, on their receiving core i think would help a ton the new york giants are next on the clock going cam smith the next corner off the board here all right this is a bit of a bummer giants obviously need a quarterback oh i mean jones ain't playing bad football right now like it's not inspiring like don't get me wrong but he's not playing bad football they're just like they're, they're scheming things very well uh they're getting better production out of the wide receivers despite the lack of real talent there at the wide receiver position so like man uh, i don't know if they stick another year with jones though just because uh, you don't want to put him on like he's got that fifth year option you don't want to stick him with that you just don't that's a that would be a horrible choice, but can you maybe get a lesser deal while you kind of figure out the quarterback situation? Uh, Cam Smith, man, the dude, dude's a ball hawk in the defense for the Gamecocks. So, uh, yeah, this is a bit early for Cam Smith for me. There's just a couple of guys I think that have really um, passed him thus far this season. And to be fair, he was kind of slowed by a concussion he suffered uh not at the georgia game but he missed the georgia game because of it this is the the e, the saints pick but the eagles uh the eagles pick via the saints they go trent simpson just grabbing more athletes at linebacker would be tough be fun uh i really like the idea of maybe safety or corner with this pick if you're the eagles um i mean we could talk Bijan too but you know running back value you know it, it's a thing it's a thing so like yeah like tj edwards has been exceptionally good uh they got white there that's playing good football you're getting to kobe dean uh they're waiting in the wean do you really go with linebacker i get i get that he gives you a lot i don't know man maybe maybe i think i go corner especially you got christian rodriguez you got uh you got clark phillips you got uh joey porter joey porter actually would be a really good fit because keep in mind james bradbury is a free agent after the season and darius slay i think he's 32 after the season 
Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars go Jordan Addison. Just keep getting weapons for your franchise quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. Kirk, he's been playing a lot in the slot. They don't really have anyone they could turn to on the outside. So I like this pick. For me, Addison is the wide receiver one. I think uh, with the with the display that Quentin, uh, Quentin Johnston put out this past week, he's put his name back into like, hey, guys, haha, I'm still here. Uh, is it enough to, to, though, to challenge Addison right now who's having a really good year? And then the Houston Texans go, oh, Kayshawn Boutte. I get it, man. They, okay, so Boutte, he is struggling because that offense for LSU is dog water. Jaden Daniels is not a thrower of the football. He is a wildcat quarterback. Um, maybe you go in a different area here with edges on the board. Like Boutte, I don't know, man. I really just don't know uh, what his stock really is right now. It's kind of wild to think just because we know how gifted he is. It's just the production hasn't been there this season. Then again, he has previous two seasons of production there on tape for us. So I don't know, man. That's a tough one. I get it. You're the Texans. You get a guy that can be this after the catch uh, machine to pair up with. Uh, you got Cooks there. You got Cook. You got uh, Nico Collins. You also have uh, uh, John Mechie coming back after this season. So. I don't know, man. I think uh, I think Miles Miles uh, Murphy would be my pick here because the pass rush isn't all that good in Houston. Just trying, to, just in terms of getting good value in the draft. Cardinals, eh, they go uh, Joey Porter, no brainer. The they have one of the worst cornerback rooms in football. Uh, not a lot of talent at that corner position, so adding Joey Porter would be nice. Long, athletic. All right, Las Vegas Raiders are going. Miles Murphy. Getting another edge? Pause. Okay, don't get caught up in helmet scouting. Okay, I don't care uh, about helmet scouting. Uh, while Max Crosby's become a premier edge, Chandler Jones has left much to be desired opposite, which, I mean, that's kind of fair. I mean, just adding more pass rushes and a bad option uh, with so many, so many so many like Paris Johnson, Broderick Jones in terms of uh, tackle prospects on, on the board. You got to think about may maybe you go there. Uh, tough call. Like the value is great for Miles Murphy, but don't really know, man. Don't really know this one. It's definitely interesting. The Titans, they go Paris Johnson, who I just mentioned. Paris Johnson, best human being in this draft. Uh, the offensive line hasn't been playing that well this season. Um, so add it. Honestly, I mean, you bring in who like what Nicholas Petit Frere, who's been playing right tackle for the squad. You bring in Paris Johnson to play left tackle. Uh, Taylor Luan, you had a great career, but the play has been kind of down in recent years. Pair him up. That's kind of sick. That's kind of solid. Uh, Nate Davis is playing good football this year. Ben Jones has always been good for the Titans. Then you just uh, you're just trying to figure out your left guard position, who's been uh, Aaron Brew, who hasn't been all that inspiring. And then the Indianapolis Colts go Broderick Jones. Yes, 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 yes. That left tackle spot is a nightmare. I think maybe, man, you might maybe go for a quarterback here. Why not? Like take a look at the quarterback still on the board, and like Tanner McKee, DJ uh, Uyunglele. Or how I like to call him DJ Ukulele. I think that's a sick nickname. But um, maybe go quarterback because let's be fair, man. Matt Ryan isn't a spring chicken. His age is very, 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 uh, what's, what's the word? Apparent at this point. Uh, granted, it's not like the line has been all that good this year. I get it. Adding more pieces to the line. But uh, I might I might be taking a swing at the at the quarterback position. Let's actually check out how this line did this past week because I'm pretty sure Bernard Ryman uh, started this past week. Actually, he he yeah 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 because he played a little bit prior week, so wasn't all that good against Denver. Denver's got a really good pass rush, so. 
I don't know. I'd, I'd probably wait on him. Obviously, you got Quinn and Nelson. Uh, Ryan Clark has been it's been all right. Uh, Danny, uh, is it Pittner? He hasn't been all that great. Former Ball State player, I if, if I'm if I'm to be right. Uh, Brandon Smith's been good though. Um, so if you if we're really gonna like hone in, man, may, maybe you're thinking going out getting better guard play. Ball State, I knew it. Sorry, I just wanted to get that out. So, I don't know. I think I'm going quarterback here. That's just my opinion. The Seattle Seahawks. They go. This is their pick via Denver. Brian Brazil. Forgot he was on the board. This is actually just a great pick. Great value. Uh, yeah, add into that interior. I love it. The Dallas Cowboys go Eli Ricks. Eli Ricks has played less than 100 snaps this year. I'm not going Eli Ricks. I'm just not. Like, I don't think anyone, like, I get it. The guy's talented, but you need to produce, and he hasn't been able to really get on the field this year for Alabama. I think there's a good chance he ends up coming back. Uh, for the Cowboys, going corner, I think I, I, don't, I think that's probably the right call. Like, I don't mind going corner. Uh, corners left on the board here. Again, you got Clark uh, Phillips. You got Christian uh gonzalez so good corner good good corners on the board here wouldn't mind taking um you could also add to the interior here but is there a prospect like you'd be looking at guys like oh hold on Bijan's still on the board i love Bijan for the cowboys like tony pollard it'd be nice to get bring him back but he is a free agent after the season somehow get off that z contract like yo Bijan, we haven't seen Bijan yet right all right, the Vikings go Isaiah Foskey. And he, they say this feels like a luxury pick because it definitely looks like it when you got Zadarius Smith and uh, Daniil Hunter on the roster. Uh, so I guess technically he's only under, like, Hunter's only under contract till 2023. Uh, I mean, I feel like there's other areas, like, uh, like, I guess, tech, like, I mean, you could go wide receiver here. Quinn Johnston's in town, you know, so you could grab him. Um, and I say in town in terms of he's still on the board, not like he's in TCU. It's a little south of Minnesota, but, uh, you also can go maybe with, uh, the cor corners in this class. Like, uh, Clark Phillips would actually be an outstanding, outstanding. Dan didn't uh, fit for this defense. Cincinnati Bengals go Michael Mayer. That's kind of a no-brainer pick. Uh, I also think Cincy could be another team that maybe like goes uh, on the offensive line. But Mayer is just great value here. You got Hayden Hurst, but I believe he's on a one-year deal. So, yeah. Chargers go Darnell Washington. Like I love Washington. I don't think he's a first-rounder, but I really like Washington. Uh, the dude is a freak athlete and he's uber athletic for his size. But, uh, if you're the charges, man, you gotta be thinking maybe, shoot, man, maybe, maybe you dip into the offensive line class, like receivers, always a possibility, uh, get more depth there. You could always go with, uh, getting more depth at the corner position. That's always a great answer too. So just think there's better value picks. All right, Detroit Lions get Christian Gonzalez. Great scheme fit. Love the pick. Uh, don't know if he's going to be here at 24, man. I'm really digging Christian Gonzalez. And then Baltimore Ravens go Henry Toa Toa. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I'm not. Patrick Queen hasn't been all that. He just hasn't. Uh, it's more so, it's looking like just a pick you've missed on. You get Henry Toa Toa, who I think is going to be a similar athlete, who's really stepped up his game this season and looked really good. And then the Miami Dolphins, they go Bijan Robinson. Oh my gosh, they go Bijan. Oh yay. I love Bijan. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Mike McDaniel doesn't have a history of like doing this. Like in terms of getting success from guys like Raheem Mostert. Look, Raheem Mostert got had success in San Fran. And now he's starting to have success here in Miami. He's usurped Chase Edmonds, who was the kind of one of the bigger free agent sign-ins for the Dolphins. Like Look at that. Like, Mike McDaniel, he's not going to go for a guy in the first round. He's, 
he's he's like you know what i could i could do good with these journeymen or with these late round or these like day three options i don't need to get running back here i could go with a more valuable position whether that's um offensive line uh you can make a case for really anywhere on the defense just continue to add talent the green bay packers are going jordan battle jordan battle wasn't the safety i'd expect to see first off the board uh i'm a fan of brian branch and antonio johnson those are my guys in this class uh i do love jordan Br or jordan battle i was a big fan of him when i thought he was coming out last year still a big fan uh, I get it, Adrian Amos. He's a bit up there, uh, not up there, but like I think he's pretty agent at the end of the year. So safety does make a ton of sense for the Packers. I just don't agree with who they picked. <laughs> okay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're going Jaron Hall. Listen, if I'm gonna make this pick, I, I like Jaron Hall. He's playing good football, but he's in the. Uh, you could go check out the stock report where I actually talked about Jaron Hall. Uh, I was mainly I started with. Hidden Hooker, and then I moved to Jaron Hall to talk about it. Who Hooker, he's got the bigger upside, though I would say Hall definitely is uh, a more. He's a guy that has a, a bit prettier uh, in terms of his passing, but both these guys are going to be 25 by the time they uh, take their first snap in the NFL. Uh, I'd rather, again, go with Tanner McKee, who's really doing a good job there, uh, despite how terrible that Sanford team is. Uh, DJ Uwe on uh, he he's on the board. He's a guy that I'm just confused why no one's talking about. Maybe people are really, really sweating how he looked last year, but I'm just assuming it's kind of a mulligan at this point. Can't see Chiefs go with Zay Flowers. Listen, you got the better Zay Flowers in Josh Downs here, but I don't... Why do the Chiefs need a receiver? Like... I get it. You lost, like you lost Tyreek Hill, and uh, you're not replacing him with Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers isn't Tyreek Hill. He just isn't. He just isn't. Like there's just better areas you can go here. Uh, if anything, like I, I would consider Johnston because he's a guy that's vastly different from anyone on your roster at this point. We could talk about. Um, really like this interior class you have yet to dip into like this interior class has so much talent we're talking guys like gervin dexter uh siaki ika uh we got quillen um roy like there's a lot of talent in this interior class why not add that uh get get finally get someone next to chris jones and the philadelphia eagles are going jameer gibbs i do like the eagles going running back though with Miles Sanders, uh, free agent after the season, uh, Gibbs, man, I don't get people really trying to talk themselves into Gibbs better than, uh, Bijan. And uh, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Um, the, the dude is at his best when he's out in space. Uh, when you go back to his Georgia tech tape where like, uh, he felt like every carry hinged on like, if he couldn't take it to the house, then George Tech was going to lose, <laughs> which was kind of fair. George Tech's not that good of a squad. Uh, and where people that's where people were like, okay, Gibbs, he seems a bit too bouncy in the backfield. And then he goes to a better, better football team in general in Alabama. He looks a lot nicer. But this guy does, he is at his best when he's out in space. He Bijan's really the between the tackles guy. If you want to find a between the tackles dude, it's Bijan. I know he's not on the board here, uh, but Gibbs is. But like, I don't know, man. I, again, there, I, there's just other areas I would probably focus on in the draft here, especially with how good the runback class is. You think uh, maybe we could find a guy day two? Buffalo Bills. They're going Andrew Voorhees. I like this. The guard play has been pretty dog water for the Bills. This season, uh, Saffold's really struggled. Uh, they haven't really got anything good, um, or at least good production out of uh, the other cats there. I know Bates, uh, but he's been banged up this year. Who's the other guy playing at right guard? Okay, it was Tommy Doyle who played a little bit there, and he was pretty awful. So, like, uh, I could definitely see this. I love Voorhees. He's got tackle capabilities. He played tackle last season 
for USC and was wonderful. Probably at his best, though, at guard in the NFL. Could have been a day two pick if he decided to come out. I love Voorhees. Big fan. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see with uh, that. I think that's a good pick. But uh, keep in mind, Dolphins forfeited their first round pick. So, we only got 31 picks in this sucker. So, uh, you know what that means. That's it for the video. Go ahead. Do the YouTube thing. As always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.